Hi, I'm Saren. And I'm Ray. We're your spider baby hosts from To Know Her Is To Fear Her, a Spider Woman podcast, as well as proud members of the collective. You're listening to Capes and Lunatics. Gimme, gimme. Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets in our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Parrish, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. I'm here for Peter. Flip, flip, Peter. The last Peter Lowe's Hellfire is going to get for a while till October. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in on the podcast. Anyway, welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Spider Cast. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, that Peter lover herself. It is. You're going to cheat on me and do another Spider-Man podcast while you're gone? <laughs> Miles Morales Mania! That's what we should have did. Oh, for one of the shows, I should have just, you know, you just sent me in random episodes to just put up that month. <gasps> or, or just splice them together. Meanwhile, in the Mexican desert. <laughs> <sighs> Meanwhile, sitting under a blaring sun, drunk off tequila, (laughs) drunk off her ass. The armadillos are carrying her home. What's going on with this Miles Morales boy? (laughs) Yeah, right. Maybe that'll, hey, maybe now you'll feel something, you know. Again, pure tequila, hot sun, maybe you'll finally feel something. (laughs) Maybe you'll finally feel something a little far. (laughs) <laughs> Nausea. Never. Vomit free since 2003. No, <laughs> Don't eat them black and white cookies. <laughs> yeah, definitely not now. <laughs> or the or uh the hair on your uh, cinnamon babka. The most elusive of all. Here's your damn babka. <laughs> Give me that right, you old bag. <laughs> All right, kids. So to kind of wrap up our She-Hulk month, uh, because the Sausage Festival, well, it's a weird, ter- it's a weird time, kids. Next week, yes, it'll be a regularly scheduled Sausage Fest, but that'll be the first of five weeks where it'll pretty much be a Sausage Fest here on Ultimate Spider Cast. So that's so much meat, man. It's <laughs> a drop. There's a drop. You know what? And at least two, and at least two fifths of that will be Ray. Right. It's a lot of meat. And Charlie will be like three fifths of that. It's a lot of meat. Sausage. Forget this. Forget this Spider-Man issues, kids. We're just gonna talk about Ray for the next hour. The hard master. All right, now. Speaking of the hard master. Hey, oh. Who are you talking about, Spider-Man, Kirkman? Yeah. Hey, oh. Either hard up or just hard. Whoa. Find out what, 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 what his situation is for this issue. All right, kids. So it's kind of, sort of. I mean, it's a Spider-Man, Spider-Man issues with She-Hulk, but you're also getting a guest stars galore from Marvel Team Up 11 through 13. Oh, uh, that's a Marvel Team Up. I know, but this is an ultimate. That's no, not ultimate, but it's a big Marvel Team Up. But yeah, so this one starts with uh, Marvel Team Up number 11 from. Love when they hide the uh, cover date. Uh. October 2005, uh, the Titan, the Titanus War, Part One. <laughs> Lilith, look at that word. Cut, cut it up. Maybe lose a letter. Yeah. Is Kirkman messing with us? <laughs> I mean, Kirkman is Kirkman. Because yeah. kids, T I T, A N N U S. I think they made them add the extra N just, just, just because. Yes. Kind of like, what do you think you're doing, buddy? It's not a soft park, see? <laughs> oh, my God. Did you watch the concert? Not yet. 
I recorded it because, yeah, because we were watching football, but uh, I watched most of it. I think I got like a half hour left, but <laughs> it's basically them just like singing songs from South Park. <laughs> but it's funny <laughs> just to watch Trey Parker sit there at the piano, just do like Mr. Mackey and stuff. Like, okay, <laughs> jokes are bad, okay? <laughs> does, does Kevin team up with Paco Medina a lot? Um, I don't know. I don't think, well, again, I mean, most of his works, you know, probably from Walking Dead, where he worked with, like, the same, like, two artists or Invincible. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I don't think. Uh, because, yes, this one's right. Robert Kirkman, writer, of course. Yes, The Walking Dead, Robert Kirkman. Uh, Invincible, Robert Kirkman. Penciler, Paco Medina. Uh, Inker, Juan Velasco. Colorist, Studio F. Letterer, virtual calligraphy, and Corey. Ah, uh, yes, Pettit. the mid two thousands where they were in digital studios. Yes, a lot of stuff for no reason, just to tinker around and see if they could get rid of artists. And if you thought this thing was easy to put together, your four editors: Tom Brevoort, Andy Schmidt, Aubrey Sitterson, and Molly Laser. You know, honestly, I only know Tom. Yeah, me too. Speak to Tom. Me too. Unless he was training some people, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> we had we had three interns editing. Oh, this is well, okay, for those of you that don't know, this these three covers, uh, they yeah, they all basically hold a uh, full, they kind of morph in what they're supposed to. Morph. Oh, yeah, they're inner, they're connected. Yeah. Super connected. <laughs> Seriously, I was just like, cash. They're like, just to make sure that you buy all three. Yeah. Because it gets a little weird. Can I can I tell you that son of a bitch has me trained? Because like anytime I put on like my wireless earbuds now, like it'll say, you know, they automatically go connected, and I'll go super connected. <laughs> I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> it's betrayed. All right, so. Now we know why. Or no. Got no. <laughs> I think you have me trained because anytime anyone says connected, you go super connected. <laughs> <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> All right, so Dr. Str- okay, yes, kids. Uh, Dr. Strange is at his home medit- meditating. When he's in the inner sanctum of something, medi- <laughs> meditating or some M word. Uh, uh, when when he suddenly senses something that causes him to collapse. No, no more free love. Uh, Wong rushes in to help, and Strange declared that it is a time for action. Meanwhile, Spider Man is swinging through the city, talking to himself as usual. When no. Can I just ask- question real quick I, mm. I mean honestly rhino is a chump like really like he, he he's the he's the bad guy well one of the bad guys but like come on he's a clown well again it's one of these guys that's like yeah they're super strong and they're unstoppable unless you like get them off the ground or something you know you either get them off the ground or you contain them in something where they can't move <laughs> uh, uh this makes me think maybe spider-man should be the guy who like breaks the fourth wall what do you think <laughs> on occasion. Yeah, true. Sort of. Yeah. But that's because Deadpool's a bad influence. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Spider-Man is swinging through the city talking to himself when Nova accidentally snaps his web line and catches him. Richard Ryder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get, get dick out of Richard. Yeah, it's nicely, of course. Every time. I'm gonna say it every time. I'm like, was someone not thinking when they came up with this no, name? They or were, were they thinking? thinking? Oh, God. <laughs> Worst of all, Richard Ryder. <laughs> because if I was creating a character, the first thing on my mind would be like, what's the name? Hmm, I can't use the Richard Ryder because you know what people are going to say. So. I told you, Rod Thruster. <laughs> he has like a human rocket. That should have been his name. <laughs> uh, after and only my best friend from high school understands that. <laughs> wow! Like for picture day one time, one of our friends got a fake ID and they they got the they actually got the ID back and they used Rod Thruster. So that's that's the whole joke. Oh, what's a what what's the matter? Their first idea was already taken by the movie McLovin. <laughs> I don't think that was out yet. Oh like, yeah, but no, like yeah, it was like it was just a joke because we were like, oh, that's like the worst movie. <laughs> like, I want a fake ID with that name, but then they literally tried to like. <laughs> I was like, you can't take that to the freaking DMV. You'll get arrested. We live in a post-9-11 world. It's not a funny joke anymore. Don't do it. 
Is that a worse porn name or Buck Naked? <laughs> no, that's classic. That's <laughs> Buck Naked. Yeah, you told me that. Uh, after commenting on how uncomfortable armpitting was, hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you're into. <laughs> Oh my god, uh... We're doing me now? But that just means that he's a bottom. No, no, no judgment. Whoa! Uh, they team up and defeat Rhino. The two... S- oh, big, big win for you! Your mom must be so proud! Damn! Somebody call Shocker and freaking Scorpion next! Just get out of here! You brag about that? Next thing you know, he'll be uh, to regaling us with tales of his defeat of uh, the Rocket Racer. The Vulture! The Rocket yeah, Racer! Oh, oh. The Vulture. Yeah, I pummeled him. Well, you should have. He's a thousand. Wow. Yeah, osteoporosis. Good for you, what? Spider-Man. I really lit into that Electro. <laughs> now, Electro, he can hold his own. We all. Hey, oh, he usually does for one of here. Hey oh! All right, that's enough of the dick joke portion of this podcast. <laughs> Never. Uh, the, the two start to talk on a rooftop when they are contacted by the astral form of Doctor Strange and are told they to got co- two of those letters right. Come to his <laughs> the ass. All these extra <laughs> letters in here. The ass form of Doctor Strange. That's just his normal. You know that astral form does look like he. Oh, what if he had to fart out his astral form? The salty and the petty <laughs> oh theories <laughs> the theories portion uh elsewhere she hulk and miss marvel meaning carol danvers are contacted by dr strange as well thanks for crushing everybody else's hopes <laughs> what thanks for crushing everybody else well, you could have just given them a little more hope you didn't have to be specific i know i know but it's two, two th- if you know you know it's 2005 yeah, you know so. you know but they didn't you didn't have to crush him like that. Yeah, but then he'd be like, why is why is she all uh, in a bar with a minor playing pool? <laughs> Tony Stark rubbed off on her. Like, hey And then half the females in the Marvel Universe. hey You know, you know. <laughs> it's canon in the comics. He slept with Gamora. All right. Uh... Miss Ma- and Miss Marvel flies She-Hulk there, so they armpit. Uh... When all four arrive at Strange's home, they talk about armpitting being uncomfortable. <laughs> Shut up, though. <laughs> before Bruce Banner appears, before Bruce Banner appears, and Strange teleports them to Japan to confront the mysterious enemy, Titanus. I'm not going to say it the other way. Titanus made of titanium. Yes. <laughs> Titanus. Uh. Titanus. Oh, but, but, but he's fighting Wolverine, so that's going to be awkward. Titanus immediately confront, confronts them, but is attacked by Wolverine. Wolverine, you know, making one of his many trips to Japan, if you know, you know. Yeah. Wait, is Wolverine a Weebo? Hold on. He likes geishas. <laughs> he's lived forever, so he's tried everything. Oh. And I do mean everything. You saw that throuple, right? Two redheads. <laughs> Cyclops is not a redhead. He's red-eyed, but not a redhead. No, he's a redhead. Oh, is he? Are you going to tell me? Strawberry blonde? That's what you're telling oh, me? Oh, okay. Okay. He's see, was not he... brown. Are you, say, are you saying he was seeing red? Because his brother is blonde, so he would never have brown hair. That's why he's a strawberry blonde, a.k.a. a, real, a redhead. Okay. Oh, my God. That's the that's the next... Wait a minute. Vulcan has black hair. Well, well... I won't. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> oh my god, that's the new, that's the new conspiracy. Every one of those Summers brothers has a different mother, because you know Corsair. Come on. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Even before he left the planet. Come on. Papa was a Rolling Stone. <laughs> Wolverine is quickly defeated and explains he has been there for a while, saving people. Banner turns into the Hulk, who is too severely beaten by Titanus. Titanus declares he only wants to talk, and they decide to listen to his story. I just destroyed a major city, but hey, let's sit down and talk to this guy. Villain monologuing? Ugh. Villain's got a monologue. I mean, I guess maybe they they decided to talk to him to buy some time, because I mean, again, he did the, he has the power to destroy a whole city, but... Well, we got two extra issues, though. Why not? Kirkman should have made the joke. Should have had Spider-Man, but like, you know what? I used to deal with these uh, 
omnipotent godlike beings. I'll sh- I'll teach him how to use the toilet. There's your Secret Wars 2 joke, Charlie Astor. You're welcome. <sighs> God, I don't even know I'm going to have to do that one day with him. Oh, God. Not this year! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Alright, uh... I don't have to do secret wars. I don't care. It was like I don't, I don't, either one of them. I don't want to do. Hey, hey! After Secret Wars, the first one, we're going to be doing two months of Captain America. If you want to send in feedback, oh, I will. Oh, okay. I'll send you. Wait, a wait, wait. Who's who, who's the writer for those Captain America? There's a. I, I tried to hit a few eras. I mean, there's some. You know, Roger Stern, JMD Mateus, Mark Grunewald, Mark Wade. I do the JMD Mateus. Okay. Okay. She's like. I, she's like. I, she's like. I want me some Bernie. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> did you did you know did you know before she became a lawyer she was working as a <clears throat> glass blower? No, I actually did not remember that. Uh-huh. Interesting. Ah, uh, Mr. Rogers, I see you. <laughs> you gotta have those little subtle jokes. You gotta have. Alright, so should we get to the next one? Let's do it. The secret of <laughs> All right, so yes, Marvel team up number twelve. Uh, okay, but I still don't know how that cover connects because the art. Never mind, I'm not. Gonna that. I'm not well, it's like the characters are on either. Was it the characters are like on either either side of him, and he's in yeah, the middle. Yeah, but where the arm is, like honestly, when you line it up, it will off. I, I, not to be nitpicky. Two thousand five, Lilith. That's what you get for going with a digital artist instead of a regular. The nineties could have pulled it off. Two thousand five ain't pulling that off. All right, so yeah, Marvel team up number twelve from November two thousand five. <sighs> the tit- scrolls, baby, scrolls. It scrolls all the way down. The Titanus War Part Two. Uh, same team. Uh, oh god. <sighs> all right. And it's a fake out though. I know. Come all right, on. we're gonna get into this. The Titan Titanus tells the hero tells the heroes of his origin. Titanus's fake story, Part One. Titanus is born on the Skrull homeworld. He is branded an outcast due to lack of shape-shifting abilities. He was used in the Super Skrull program. They tortured him with failed experiments and eventually succeeded. They started treating him even worse and he escaped. Part 2. Titanus hid from his people, meaning them no harm whatsoever. But they came after him, never leaving him alone. They caught him and exiled him in the space with no food. He had to live off what he could find. He eventually made it to an alien world. Part 3. He landed on a peaceful planet and was greeted with open harm, arms, becoming close to the alien king. He was. Lies, lies, he's I know. Telling lies. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. He was treated like a son and was truly happy. One night, the king died in his sleep and Titanus inherited the planet. He took good care of the deceased king's daughter, <laughs> good care, and attempted to spread the peace throughout the galaxy. Part 4 He successfully spread peace throughout the galaxy until his planet was invaded by the warlike Trellians. He impressed the Trillian leader and was kept alive but weakened. He lost the will to live and longed to return to the Skrull homeworld. He would have died if not for Princess Amissa, who kept sneaking him food. They fell in love and kept it a secret until one day they were discovered and Titanus was severely beaten. He was sent into the desert to perish, but with a group of rebels, he attempted to overthrow the Trillian king. Amissa's father, uh, in revenge, the king poisoned Amissa so she would never end up with Titanus. Titanus put her into stasis and traveled around the galaxy, finding no cure. Then he crashed on Earth. True story! Part 1. Titanus is born on the Skrull homeworld. He is branded an outcast due to lack of shape-shifting abilities. This is probably true, but he is also shown killing a Skrull soldier. <laughs> he was used in the Super Skrull program. They successfully gave him incredible powers. They treated him kindly, but he killed them all and left. As you do. Just a little Hellfire story. Uh, part my origins, my origin, my villain origins. Her and Rod Thruster. Hey, oh. <laughs> part two. Titanus waged war on the Skrull. He destroyed their cities and crippled their people. One day, he broke into the hangar and left the world behind him. He ate weaker Skrulls to survive. Oh wow! This is your origin. <laughs> eat the weak. Cannibal. Oh. Turn in the chicken so I can eat you. <laughs> they they must they must chase like chicken or beef or something because remember Reed Richards first appeared turned some of them in the cows. Yeah, you, you want 
to know why I could never be a why I stopped eating pork is because uh, if you ever listen to those cannibal stories, they say human flesh. And when you think about it, if you know scientifically, skins uh, pig skin is actually closest to human skin. So yeah, I gave up pork a while ago. Well, we could, we could always ask Army Hammer. No, leave him alone. He's working two jobs in the Bahamas. Leave him alone. Hey, Mon. He he got cut off. His shenanigans. Well, that and the army, the hammer, the whole hammer hammer family is about to lose their money. That's what oh my! No need for an F in the chat. Don't feel bad for him. Don't feel bad for people. No, don't feel bad for him. He may have no money, but his <clears throat> belly's full. Uh, part three. He landed on a war-hungry planet and was attacked and defeated by servants of the alien king. He was used as a gladiator and in retaliation killed the king in his sleep. He took over the planet and started to invade other planets. Part four, he successfully conquered most of the galaxy until he attempted to invade the Trellian world and his army was wiped out. He made a deal with the Trellian king and was treated like a member of the royal family. He fell in love with Amissa, but she did not return the love. One day, he nearly killed the king who had fled into the wilderness. The king returned and overthrew Titanus. He kidnapped Amissa and put her in the stasis. He escaped the Trellians and crashed on Earth. He came to the wrong planet, buddy. Now, Doctor Strange senses he is lying and Wolverine can smell that he is lying. Doctor Strange says that he should examine Amissa as he is a doctor. Spider-Man then gives a speech about why they shouldn't help Titanus and the group charges at Titanus. So, Wolverine, what do lies smell like? Yep. Bull. You know how they say bull, bull pocky. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm. But yeah, I, I, I mean, that was kind of interesting when he's telling this story where it's like they, sh- like they would show the lie, then they'd show the truth, lie, truth. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like... I don't think that was necessary, but anything to pad out the runtime. How do you tell if a scroll is lying? His lips are moving. <laughs> oh, but shout out to the Marvel team up where Spider-Man meets and then just what, like... Yes, which we covered, yes. Yeah. Scroll way down. Yes, or go to the, uh, the YouTube channel. Yes, all our shows have their own playlist, so. I still like it. What, the second one, or? Yeah, the, the Marvel team. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, that one, yeah, yeah, that is good. I've been kind of reading through these lately. Uh, what's that one with freaking um, Blade and Punisher? That one's good, too. I don't know if I read that number one. Eight. But yeah, I did. Eight. I read these, and of course we did the events. That's Kirkman, too, so, you know. I skipped to the end and read the last issue because there was Titanus stuff. So, yeah. yeah. But man, some of these issues, man, he gets like you know he you, you could tell Mister Invincible, man. He's thinking, yeah, they get a little bloody. It's his favorite thing. I know. I, you know me. I for one appreciate. Oh yeah, I, I know. You love. <laughs> Although I didn't think Invincible was as bloody as it could be. None of the Capodiums. I like you know compared to the TV show. Honestly, I'm like, oh. Do they feel they had to up it for the TV show? I think they did. Well. Listen here, isn't it interesting how, you know, basically Jeff Bezos is literally the, the real life Lex Luthor, but he's always doing TV shows about like how bad Superman is. I'm just saying, isn't that interesting? It the is. The boys, invincible. I, I'm just saying, I'm starting to wonder about Bezos. He's, I, I, the, the Rockets worried me, but his propaganda on Amazon Prime, keep an eye on that. Don't let him near any funny colored rocks, kids. <laughs> He's really a redhead that shaved his head. Then we really have to worry. Oh, my. All right. So should we get to the last one? Let's do it. After after an issue of monologuing. <laughs> <laughs> my God. I didn't think. That, that's been a long time since the, like I've read a comic book. It's like a monologue. Like a monologue that long. Seriously. That's like some 70s type stuff. That's, I don't know, man. That wasn't uh, 70s monologuing. That was. Uh, no, some, that was. Bendis, Bendis, Bendis. Oh yeah, and whole issue of monologuing. That's that's pure Bendis. That's a. I don't think Bendis has ever done it, but I bet you he and goes, "You son of a bitch." Although it's to, it's again, this is 2005. Bendis is at the height of his powers. So yes, yeah. Where to go? But damn. Dark powers. <laughs> Hope it's going somewhere. Nice. No, he didn't go down after this. I mean, I'd, I'd say what was the pinnacle? Maybe Secret Invasion. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Jessica Jones, the house mom, because that pissed me off. Oh, I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> I mean, he was climbing, climbing. New Avengers. He got to Secret Invasion. I mean, they spun. You know, they spun. Nor- they made Norman the new Lex out of that one. It's just like yeah. that's like. Then he got Moon Knight. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to get to Moon Knight. 
wait to put on trial and have Ray be the freaking prosecutor. <laughs> Who's gonna do? We have to find somebody that's gonna defend him. Maybe Charlie, because Charlie will defend anything, even if he don't believe in it. <laughs> Chaser. That's a good defense attorney. The guy don't even you know you don't have to believe the guy's innocent. You just gotta give him a, you know. Is that Capes three hundred? Instead of the is that Capes three hundred? Is that enough time to prepare? <gasps> oh my god, how awesome would we, No we, every hundred every hundred episodes from there we just put a different person on trial, like Frank Miller. <laughs> That or every 50, yeah. Oh my god, well, I'll email Ben this, and of course we'll never hear back, and he'll be like, well... You're he didn't tried for your crimes against comic books. <laughs> he didn't answer our warrant, so we'll try him in absentia. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you know, oh my god, the line's gonna the line's gonna form if I say, oh hey, we're putting Ben this on trial, who wants to present evidence? Oh my god. <laughs> Just tweet it? Oh my god, I'll need someone 24-7 answering the email. Holy <laughs> They'll have to definitely have a podcast, though. <laughs> like, what's your group? What's your group? It's against Michael Brandon. <gasps> I'll just oh no, just go through class ben. action lawsuit. <laughs> yes, on YouTube and mentally and emotionally scarred by Brian Michael Bendis. Oh my god, I might have to make a commercial and just put it on up on YouTube. <laughs> oh have you god. been? Have you been mentally uh, <laughs> hurt by Mar- Mr. the works of Mr. Brian Michael Bendis? <laughs> Were you ever in a comic shop between the years 2000 and 2010? <laughs> no, no, no. We have to include Superman. Okay. Were you in any comic shop between 2000 and 2018? <laughs> that you may... You... You, you may, may be entitled for financial compensation. You may be entitled to some justice. <laughs> oh. Leave a voicemail. Tell us, tell us where Bio Brand... Why Michael Brand been just hurt you. <laughs> Lilith, well, you know if we do this right, we could probably sell tickets to this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on Patreon, pay per view Patreon. <laughs> Either Patreon, oh my god, even if, oh, jeez. I would do it for the press, be like, man, we'll give the money to charity, I don't care. We're just. <laughs> Order in the coin! <laughs> I know what project I'm having Lilith work on during her vacation. <laughs> oh no, that's gonna be another year long project. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if we'll. I don't know if we'll be. We only have like twenty five weeks to plan this out. If we do three hundred, <laughs> is six months long enough? <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> All right, let's get to this last issue: the Titanus War, Part Three. Again, same team. Spider Man is just there to because it's a team. He is not doing nothing. Yeah, no, he's just he's the you know he's the headliner. He's just the face. Uh, Bruce. Oh, but Quasar is in this one, right? Yes! Did you guys cover this one, Tangent? No, I didn't even know about that. This was a happy accident. I was like, yeah, buddy. I'm like, it's still recycling content. No, 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 no. I, I don't know if Will ever knew about it, but no, no, no. Yeah, we didn't get to a lot of the, like, the stuff from well, this, I mean, they, this they, era. They show up pretty much in the third act on the helicopter. Yeah. Spoilers. So. I mean, we mostly got to like, Quasar's you know, ongoing and like the Avengers issues at that time. Yeah. I thought at, at towards the end you guys were literally like scraping every appearance or something like that nah we just did like specials on like squadron and supreme and stuff because they showed up a lot in the series bruce banner tries to save civilians from the superheroes ongoing battle with titanus he can barely think straight yet cannot turn into the hulk as the army arrives he witnesses a family get crushed by falling debris what is this batman which allows him to turn into the hulk (laughs) sorry ray oh you know the scene I'm talking about. Batman, my favorite character. Mm. Oh my god! You know how pe- you know how petty I am. Did you see the announcement today on? Uh, well, I saw it on Facebook. I don't know how how far it spread, but I guess uh, I don't know if it's going to be a semi regular thing. I don't think it's going to be like a whole weekly thing or monthly thing or anything. But uh, I guess Ray Ru- Ray Russell and Justin, our patrons, so join the Patreon elite, are doing some kind of semi regular uh, Predator podcast. Ray Ray has been slobbering at the you know. Oh, but there's a Batman versus Predator comic book. Is he gonna cover that? A hey, two little hellfire. The first thing I put, I, all I commented was yes, and I put a cover of Batman versus Predator. <laughs> if you need a copy, Ray, I've got a signed one. Oh, you oh come all right, oh. Justin Russell. You know you can't twist that knife clean enough you know you need me and Lo- me and Lo- me and Lothon you know the host of uh, we are the night the Batman the podcast Batman on podcast, 
where vengeance has been reborn. What when you cover this? Sorry, yeah. Ray. <laughs> ah, Batman, Ray. my like, favorite I'm just, character. I'm just listen to a Spider Man podcast. I'll have, I'll happy go lucky and boom. Can 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 have any pop culture loves? Can you, Ray? <laughs> Batman, my favorite character. <laughs> All of a sudden, you're gonna say, by five o'clock today, you're gonna say, hey. Forget about the Predator. We're going to do some Tigra, maybe some Hercules. <laughs> Get ready for that Wonder Man show. <laughs> oh, hey, if I don't talk to... Oh, yeah, because... Well, next issue, next episode is going to be the Sausage Fest, and then uh, he's going to be joining us on that two-part Wonder Man thing, so... He's like, well, that was just a taste. We're going to do a deep dive into every issue from Wonder Man and all of his guest appearances. I'm, I'm going to have so much opportunity to say, so when are you getting those Batman vs. Predator issues, Frank? <laughs> Like, just keep writing in. Hey, man, we're still waiting on that Batman vs. Predator. What's up? <laughs> or if he, or if he does it, or you know, if he does that in his plugs, I'll be like, <coughs> Batman vs. Predator. <laughs> All right, so yeah, Bruce Banner gets mad when he sees some pe- bunch of people get killed. Uh, the Hulk attacks Titanus, whilst the other heroes decide that they should distract Titanus. Whilst Doctor Strange and Nova search for Titanus's ship, as Titanus, <laughs> hey, oh, come along. Richard Ryder. <laughs> as uh, as Titanus sends Hulk flying, Wolverine attacks, hoping to have an advantage whilst the Hulk is battling, but it is too late. Titanus defeats him he with took a blow to the chest. Hey, better, better than the face, I guess. <laughs> Tell us a little hellfire, which is worse. <laughs> Not in the face. Ah, <sighs> uh, uh, but yeah, but Titanus defeats him with a severe blow to the chest. Spider-Man webs Titanus' feet together. Ah, oh, he ties his shoelaces together. Whilst Miss Marvel and She-Hulk knock him over. She-Hulk advances on Titanus alone, but he breaks her arm. Say, I told you, man. Kirkman, man. Getting brutal here. Spider-Man blinds Titanus with webbing. As <laughs> It's like his go-to move, man. Not in the face. Uh, when Titanus... Well, Mary Jane won't let him do it, so, you know, he's got to get it out somewhere. Well, he does it here, and then he does it to, like, Otto and Jameson. Jameson had a time. Ooh, ooh, that's symbolic, man. Yeah, he sprays Jameson in the face with that webbing. Literally hit him in the face with that web set. Ah! (laughs) (laughs) He hit him right in the face with that sack. It's wintering time. (laughs) Uh... Spider-Man blinds Titan, uh, but when Titanus removes it and attempts to punch Spider-Man, he discovers Spider-Man has webbed borders to his hands as one hits him full on. He then uses the one attached to his other hand to his advantage. He crushes Spider-Man and Miss Marvel as he ch- turns towards She-Hulk. Doctor Strange and Nova return with Amissa, who says his story is a lie and that she hates him. The grief causes Titanus to crush his own head. <sighs> what an F-boy. Later on the helicarrier, Nick Fury arranges for Quasar, yes, uh, to take a miss at home. Uh, hey, boys, you look at the party. I love the party. Hope it's going somewhere nice. Hey, <laughs> oh no, uh, hope it's going somewhere nice. They aren't even attempting to enter our orifices. Uh, he flies off into space whilst. <laughs> Someone loves whilst in this uh, room. I know. I was about to say, somebody really loves that freaking word, whoever did this one. Wolverine and Spider-Man pay a visit to Iron Maniac, who who was the first to mention Titanus. <sighs> yeah, it's like an alternate version of Tony Stark. Yeah, I was going to say Anthony Stark from what, Earth uh, as well? I forget, yeah. Meanwhile, in space, Amissa attacks Quasar and flies off alone. Iron Maniac tells the heroes of how things went on his world. Iron Maniac's version of events. On his Earth, the Avengers never disbanded. So when Titanus landed, the Vision detected him immediately and had no reason to believe his story was a lie. As soon as the Avengers reached the Trillian world, Titanus turned on them and killed Wasp. Not Wasp! No, no! They believe he had also killed Hank Pym, but this... Eh, he did the world a favor. Oh, damn, but this was not so. Amessa revealed that Titanus was supposed to lure them to their world. It took the Reserve Avengers oh God, five years to find them and another five. So what, what is that, Midwest? No, 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 no. I mean, the, in the 90s, I know they were like. No, I know. They had yeah. auxil- auxiliary. 
you're only allowed certain a certain number, and then you had backups and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it took the Reserve Avengers five years to find them, and another five for the heroes of Earth to beat them badly enough for them to stop attacking. Back in the room, Iron Maniac then reveals that he could not believe anything could kill Titanus. We then see in Japan two scientists examining his body. They mentioned Doctor Strange is using magic to rebuild Tokyo and that Titanus's head is growing back. Oh, no! <laughs> uh. Oh, you're gonna have to read, uh, 14 on your own, kids. <laughs> well, again, well, again, we did it because that's the Invincible issue because... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it takes a while, I think, to get back to this Titanus stuff. Maybe we'll get there eventually. <laughs> but not this year. <laughs> so, thoughts, love? <laughs> No, Tino Shade, this did not need to be three issues. This did not need to be stretched out this bad. But I do like the ending. I love when Nick Fury shows up, especially the helicarrier. The helicarrier entrance is always iconic, whether it's in a comic book or movie. That is the moment we are always waiting for. Yep. Oh, yeah. That, that's my favorite part, honestly. And again, you don't think Kirkman stuff is that violent. A dude crushed his own head. <laughs> I tell you, I'm desensitized. As a child of the 90s, where movies that would have been rated R turned into PG-13, I am very much desensitized. I know you're not used to seeing men crush their own heads, Little Hellfire, but come on. <laughs> seriously. I'm just, seriously, like, all, all the stuff that I've watched as a child, violent, <laughs> a horror movie, slasher, thriller movies, yeah, I this, this does not phase me. She's like, oh, yeah, he's dead. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I forget which uh, which writer was asking us if I, if I thought something. I was like, I am not the one to ask for that. <laughs> Might have been DG. Might have not been. But it was somebody. I was like, yeah, I am not the person to ask that question. Cause I don't think it is at all. I mean, out, outside of like ripping somebody's spine out of their mouth, a la Mortal Kombat, like. <laughs> was it DG? I, mean, like... I think it might have been DG. <laughs> I don't know what issue we were talking about, but I remember. I can't remember either. But, ah, oh, Surgeon General, feel good tale. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see? exactly. More comic books are like this. <laughs> but it was, I think, yeah, it had to be Gigi because I don't think actually for all the big guns and pouches in the 90s, it actually wasn't a lot of violence, violence necessarily. Yeah. It was just a little bit more adult situation, shall we say. So things got a little sexier. Boy, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we, we, but we can contribute that to Burn, John Burn, probably. Burn. Like the late 80s, you know. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I think it was okay, but it did not need to have to be three issues. Obviously, they were doing that for the cover. They thought, hey, we should do a cool cover. What's the story? doesn't matter. Because, <laughs> again, it's, it's the middle odds. You know, it's 2005. Uh, com comics are struggling with their storytelling. It's we're, uh, we're almost to the 2010s where we get a little bit of a, a resurgence in yeah. resiliency and storytelling. But, yeah, the I, first. Again, it's after the bank. Post 9-11. Yeah, post 9 11, yeah. it is bad storytelling. People oh. are either overly patriotic or just absolutely meandering at that point. And again, it's it's after the bankruptcy, but it's before Disney swoops in. So it's kind of like. It's real bad time for Marvel. It's kind of like, hey, okay, yeah, go ahead. Throw it at the wall. Let's see if it like sticks. Literally, before this arc, we're doing Blade versus Punisher because Blade yeah. was the best. Well, Blade and Punisher were the only things yeah. out there movie wise. And again, Think about that. Again, Blade you're and Punisher. Well, Blade was a good. Two movies and then the third one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. And Punisher. Punisher Warzone. I need to sue somebody for that because I am traumatized from that movie. <laughs> that was so utterly bad. I'd rather watch the video game of, you know, the little I, story. I think I might have that in there on Blu-ray. I think I watched it once on Blu-ray and never touched it again. As you should. I was going to say, not even watch it. I, I don't think I've touched the case. It's sitting in the cabinet just sitting there. <laughs> Oh, I was thinking I should. Oh, I was thinking I should try to like sell some of the ones like I never watched. That could be one of them. <laughs> come on, a dollar. Come on. <laughs> I, I would. I, you know what? Honestly, um, I was at the. What's it called um, not Family Dollar. It's the one that sells furniture. Um, oh, Big Lots. Yes. And I bought like like two years ago. I bought the third Blade on literally Blu-ray for fifty cents during Christmas time. Really. Oh my god! If you wait till Christmas. Those bl those Blu-rays, not just not DVD, Blu-rays go crazy. Oh yeah, or sometimes even like Black Fridays. Sometimes yeah, they'll put yeah. some of those on. They have big sales on those. I'm I never saw. I got the Flash 
original series on DVD at Walmart for two dollars. Yeah, I was gonna say I think season one. I think Tyler got some of those CW ones on real cheap on a Black Friday. Yeah, I know I got Arrow season five real cheap when it premiered. I'm not lying. It, no, it, was season, it had to be season four. Yeah. I don't know if they sell because like was it like is it like might be walmart might even be target too like they don't even like stock like the blu-rays of them you might get like a dv even just like dvd no, I, copy i found the blu-rays there in my walmart. Uh, okay maybe it's a regional thing maybe i know i know a lot of walmart's only stock things that sell in the area. that's what i was gonna say they might not be selling in the Cause area that's the only reason to buy the arrow uh because if you don't if you buy the dvds you don't get the commentary yeah the scenes exactly scenes. i would and get- plus if you have like the whole collection there i remember they actually had to re-release i forget which season it was because they didn't put it in the dvd the blu-ray like steel case and all the other ones were in steel case and they ended up re-released it because the fans were like what the hell put it in the steel case so it matches everything else and they literally ended up doing that yeah like, two years later yeah i gotta get the blu-ray so i usually pick it up at best buy so <laughs> and, and this is this is really funny i actually didn't own any of the um supernatural dvds because i was literally waiting for the series collection right so i was no i didn't i had a, like no i had like the anime because that because you can't find that anywhere it's like season one anime that was the only supernatural like that I had, and then I, 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 it was always on TNT or you know like yeah. Netflix at the time, so I never needed it. And then when it came out, I finally got it. And I was just like, oh, I can't did, they like no. se- did they put a whole set? Did they put? They put the whole collection out. It's only like two hundred and fifty dollars. Whereas I paid a hundred and fifty for the limited edition Smallville complete series, which I already had. All, like yeah. I have multiple copies. I have it on VHS. I have it on DVD. I have it on Blu-ray, and I have the ple- complete collection with the newspaper and everything and the yearbook and all that yeah i was gonna say i, I have a lot of smallville stuff in my house. <laughs> a lot. i was gonna say i have every season of smallville but yeah that's not bad for supernatural considering it's what 15 seasons i know well, well, yeah two seasons three seasons are technically shortened but yeah uh, okay but it's a big ass box huh yeah it's huge <laughs> but yeah i just always find that really fascinating what they decide how they decide to put out in the formats yeah i remember dvds used to have commentary and then they started doing blu-ray and only the blu-rays got commentary i know uh, i i keep thinking i i might wait and uh maybe uh when they put out better call saul the whole complete series maybe put i that want up. it with the breaking bad though like mm. i need it as like the complete because honestly you think they'll put it together or do you just, just I buy think two do a limited edition fan collection definitely with both of them eventually I might won't be in the next three years, but probably like the next five to yeah. seven years, they'll do it. That might be worth it. Yeah, especially since whenever yeah. it's like done, being able for like streaming availability. Yeah, AM, AMC Plus yeah. and whatever. Yeah. Then that's when up. Damn it! I don't want to let you go, little hellfire. <laughs> we got a whole other podcast. I know, know but I mean, and this we is have all next week. It's okay. <laughs> Shh, oh. playing to the audience. No, I don't want to let you. Oh, you can edit that out. I know. Oh, um, dang it. You made me forget what I was saying. Was <laughs> it Sp- Spider-Man? Blu-rays? What? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, you know, I, I'm not that I've ever looked, but, um, do they have, like, that original 90s Spider-Man series on, on DVD or anything? Uh, I... Probably not, because it's on Disney Plus now, right? Yeah, it is. So, yeah, I don't, um, yeah, I never looked. Maybe I'll look here. I've never thought about it. I, yeah. I've seen all those episodes so much, like... <laughs> because <laughs> that's all we had and all they did was play reruns after they stopped making new episodes i don't think i actually need to watch it but it would be nice to have in the collection with my spider-man movie i was gonna say you i bet you are probably... any of the cartoons spider-man cartoons available um i don't know what well, looked up that uh, bu- 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 i don't know if they actually have like the whole that 9d series well, the the X-Men whole... has they have it for x-men 92 yeah i've seen it I'm looking on Amazon. I'm not seeing a complete collection, but they'll have like collections of episodes. It looks like like they have you know like oh like they used to do for Justice League, the Venom Saga, Daredevil vs Spider Man. I know they have the X-Men but they're DVDs, so they might have ne- they might have never even put it out on Blu-ray. Hey, yeah, like you said, yeah, spe- yeah, they probably would have never put. Especially it now, it's on Disney. Enough. It's on Disney Plus now, so yeah, I think they well something to petition for. Yeah, uh, the only one you might get the whole collection of is like that spectacular Spider Man from a few years ago. <laughs> I did. You know what? I never watched that whole thing. I don't is like that the-, the one that Deadpool shows up. Is that the one? No, 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 no. no. Um, there's so they've been so many, and none of them. Have been yeah, that good. there was a few on Disney. It was like the last one before they went all oh, to Disney like Disney. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. The spectacular Spider Man was that like 2007. It's the one with like the the like real. I don't like the animation. It's really almost looks juvenile. <laughs> 
Speaking of juvenile, I love, uh, what is that? Amazing Spidey Friends or whatever. I have all the plushies, but I've never seen an episode. Oh, the, uh, on, uh, yes. yeah. What is that? Disney Junior or whatever? Come Disney on. Junior. Cause I always see all the merch. And I'm like, it's so cute because they have, like, Miles, Gwen, and Peter. And they're I, all, like, the same age and, like, little chibi. Fo- like, I have all the plushies. <laughs> so son, son of a bitch. Like, Luca aged out, like, before. Right as that was... <laughs> But he aged out, yeah, and we stopped watching it right before that started. I'm like, damn it! <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I was like, I have the merch. I've never seen an episode. I feel like such a poser. <laughs> I have to go find it and watch at least one episode. <laughs> and all my, all my freaking god kids are like high school. Oh yeah, high school I, now. I mean, again, it's like all the shows on there are for like you know, like preschool, kindergarten, like younger. And I was like, well, yeah. Like we, I mean, if but, I did ever have another god kid, like, hey, bestie, we, we need another baby. Um, I want them to watch, uh, like, Gracie's yeah. or Coco Melon or anything like that. So, but no, the only good thing about Disney Junior, I remember, is uh, since it is for little kids, like, they don't put commercials in the shows, they you know, they save all the show, all the commercials for like oh, before and after style. the shows, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so that's the only that's the only good thing about that is like, yeah, you watch a, one of those little kid shows, they don't put commercials in the middle, it's like, oh, sweet. Nick Jr. <laughs> Answer for yourself. <laughs> I don't know. Nick Jr. might do that too, but I, I think I vaguely recall because um, I was checking out new new Blues Clues for content for TikTok. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think they had a commercial. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was gonna say I think like even like the regular Disney channels have like commercials, but yeah, the Disney Junior is like for the little kids. So it, I think it, that's regulation and stuff. Probably, and again, it's like you know because I know I don't think the YouTube kids can have commercials until after. They can't have like a mid mid credit yeah. roll or whatever on it. And again, if you're like, you know, if you're four or five year olds or, you know, six, you know, you want to hold their attention too. Yeah, definitely. Although when we were kids, Jim and the Hologram, I mean, well, our, 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 our TV shows were commercials for the toys. So. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> a little different. Anywho, enough rant, rant pants. <laughs> I'm going to stay through the commercial. I want to see what that damn Megatron's up to. <laughs> All right, so yeah, kids. Again, we're losing Little Hellfire for five weeks here. So yes, next week will be your regularly scheduled uh, sausage fest uh, with uh, Ray and Dave. We'll be talking uh, some more Ben Riley from Sensational Spider-Man number six, Amazing Spider-Man four thirteen, and Daredevil three fifty four. Uh, and then that's like, a lot of meat. Hey, oh, <laughs> that's right. And as I said, and uh, for three of the four weeks of September, Charlie Esther's taking over. Uh, so yes, in two weeks, a Marvel team so up. You're doing some superior plus, I assume. Yes, the one week will be superior Spider-Man one through three. The uh, uh one of the other weeks is Marvel team up one twenty one and Amazing Spider-Man two sixty three and two sixty six, which is base, so which is basically Frog Man, and I believe one of those is Spectacular Spider Kid. So. Oh well, it sounds like some different fresh fun. Content. I'm pandering to my audience. I'm pandering to the Charlie Esther. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, you're gonna get something to you know. Not something you get on a Phil and Lil uh, <laughs> dick joke episode. Yeah, you know. Poor Phil won't be able to sell a proper dick joke for weeks. Ha 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 ha. What? Uh, nothing. Nothing. It's nothing. Froggy style. Although the third week of September, we will be joined by Noel Tate and maybe Russell to cover Marvel Team Up 96, uh, Spider Man and Ho- Howard the Duck. <laughs> Who has knees? How dare you do that episode when I'm not around? How dare you. That's the only episode no one would agree to do. I'm like, oh my god. How dare you stab me in the back like that, we, Noel? We, oh, I was going to say, we could do it again. Or if you want to send feedback. Oh, Lil, send feedback. Yeah, I'm going to try to send feedback. for. Well, I, I couldn't for the one that you already uh, have in the can, but all the other ones. Yeah, yeah. Best. Okay. Again, look at the ca- if Again, unless you want me to let you know, you have access to the calendar. I have the list and I have the calendar. Just look at the calendar. <sighs> All right, kids. So yeah, lots coming up. So send us your thoughts, <laughs> especially on uh, September. I want to hear what people like and uh, <sighs> all the thoughts. So email us capes and lunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 capes. And stay tuned, kids. Episode 200 is coming in October. Believe it or not, capes and lunatic sidekicks. Uh, so yes, uh, 
You can find Ultimate Spidercast on Face. You can also contact us there on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, join the Web of Spider-Man Facebook fan group now at 3.9K members. Uh, so give us a little bump so we can get to 4,000 and find all the Marvel and DC uh, social media we have. Uh, link to the YouTube channel. Uh, again, everything we do gets a, a video, including all the interviews and specials, everything. All of September will be there. So uh, you want to see some pasty, uh, pasty gentlemen. Yes. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss Make any of it. it so smash it. Appetizing. What? Make it sound so appetizing. Oh my! <laughs> If you <laughs> can't promise Charlie Esser's nipples, but uh, there better be no nipples on my gosh darn ultimate spider cat. Not for free. Not friendly show. Not for free. You got to pay. And speaking of paying, yes, please subscribe to the Patreon. Again, we're out here selling, trying to sell as many pictures to Jameson as we can. Uh, paying for this. Out I think he's on to us. Hey, oh, <laughs> give it to him in the face. Uh, so, yeah, so. Every little bit helps to three to five dollars uh, to the Patreon gets you exclusive access to early access to creator interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats. I got the good mic out for you guys. Always a good time. Always an informative time on the uh, ins and outs of uh, the comic book business. And of course, because she loves pain, superhero movie brackets. We, we, we will find the worst superhero movie, even if it kills Phil. And it will. And it might. Uh, so yes, the August episode will be, uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen verse, uh, Sin City 2, a dame to kill for. And if that's not enough, pick yourself up some Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks merch. Find it all at Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. Lilith Hellfire, where can people, uh, talk to you? Nerds want to hang out with me on the interwebs, feel free to find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire, on Instagram at Lil Hellfire69, and of course on TikTok, making all the comments and none of the content at Lil Hellfire69. Either do the six or do the nine. <laughs> if you want a good villain monologue, follow us on social media. <laughs> well, you don't want to know the things I've done. If you want to put your ribs pants on, follow me. <laughs> come, come, come. <sighs> Let me get a ride on your alligator back, bro. I don't do Twinkies or toaster strudels, so somebody's muffins getting buttered. That ain't my business. <sighs> All right, kids. You have enough drops to pretend like I'm still here. Oh, I know. That's what I'm saying. I should have just I should have just did a whole all September myself and just threw in drops. All right, kids. Thank you for joining us again. Lilith returns. Okay. In, Lilith returns in October. But until then, you have a bunch of old men talking comics. So. Are you regularly your regularly scheduled Ben Rally next week? But until then, swing on back. Flip, flip, flip in the face. Take that, Jameson. Yeah, going on on a high note. Hi, I'm one of the high priests of Conchu Ray, and I have the sacred privilege of providing you, the loony listener with a podcast honouring Marvel's very own Moon Knight. So join me and a host of others at Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram or support the show by becoming a Patreon member. Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. It's time to get your conchu on.